right guys, so I'm going to show you how you can mount posters and prints onto a mat board. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of all the materials you need to have. First, you need to have your print. And if it has a white background, I really suggest you have prop marks on it so you actually know the boundary of the print. This will save you a lot of time. Ideally, if you have a color background, you'll actually have a bleed setting so that the color actually extends past the prop mark. That means that when you trim it, you won't accidentally get that little sliver of white um, around it. So it'll really make it easier on yourself. Additionally, you'll need a mat board of some sort for you to actually uh, mount onto. So this one is actually black on one side and white on the other. Typically, we like to have things mounted on the black side. I'm gonna mount on the white side for this example, just so you can see any pencil marks a little bit more clearly. Additionally, you'll also want a pencil. You'll want an X-Acto blade. So I'm gonna talk about the X-Acto blade a little bit more. And then you're going to have um, double sticked lined tape. Um, and what this is, is tape that has a very sticky side on one side and then has a liner that you're able to reveal when you're ready for it. You don't wanna have that, um, that Scotch brand double stick tape for a variety of reasons. This is a lot easier to work with. Um, if you can't find it um, at like any sort of office store, you can find it in a craft store. Look in the scrapbooking section and typically you'll find this type of stuff if you don't see it in an art supply store. Uh, and then you're gonna need extra X-Acto blades. Um, and I realize this is a whole lot of X-Acto blades um, here, but you'll need at least um, a few extra. These are meant to only have a couple of good cuts. Um, so you might use one to two, depending on what you're working on. Especially if you're a little rough on it, you might break part of it and it won't cut as well. These are meant to be disposable, which means you need to be prepared to dispose of it. Um, I actually have a little container here that puts the used ones in, but if you don't have something like this, you can put it in an envelope, tape it closed, put it in the trash so that way it doesn't like come through the plastic bag and cut anyone. And then lastly, we need a ruler, okay? Um, what's nice is to have a ruler with a finger guard, especially if you're not very good at cutting yet, that allows it so that if it uh, moves, the blade moves, it won't cut your finger, but uh, it's not a huge deal if you don't have um, that type of ruler. You don't want a little 12 inch plastic ruler in this case. You'll want at least an 18 inch, a nice good aluminum one. Um, ideally, it's better if it's longer. This one's 36 inches. So first, um, I want you to notice the crop marks on the page. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hold it up to the light. If you can't see it, if you're in a darker room, hold it up to a window of some sort. And I'm going to take the pencil and mark where the crop marks are on the back side. What this allows me to do is know where I should put adhesive on the back. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put the adhesive on the back of the poster before we cut it. And this means that we have a little bit more of wiggle room when it comes to trimming. Okay, so now I have those prop marks on the back. If you want to really hammer it in and feel really comfortable, you can actually draw the lines um, with the ruler of where the edge of that print is because you wanna make sure that you have the adhesive slightly going over that edge. Uh, so if you're especially nervous at first, you can do this um, on the page, but uh, once you get a little bit more practice, you can just eyeball it. Next, I am going to pull off the tape. Um, what I'm gonna do is you can um, take it off in sections in case you want, or you could try to figure out exactly how much you want in one strip. Um, it is easier if it's a one strip on each side, but it's not a big deal if you do it otherwise. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, get the double stick tape over here, and then I am going to put it on the page, and I'm going to slightly go over that line. And if you happen to have too much tape, you can always take a pair of scissors and trim it off. I just encourage you to not stick it on the table, okay, because then you're gonna have adhesive on the table, so you can fold it in, put it in garbage, um, whatever, have a little pile and do that. So you'll see that I have the tape overlapping just a little bit over that line on top and going over the edge. And then I'm gonna just repeat those steps. It's helpful 
to have one solid line on one side, and I'll show you um, why in a second. And then the rest of it, you can do in pieces if you feel um, more comfortable that way. So I'm just gonna repeat those steps. And I wouldn't be stingy when it comes to how much tape you put on. You don't want to have a lot of holes. It's okay if you have a couple little gaps, but if you have a lot of holes, you'll find that it actually um, doesn't do the best job of mounting and doesn't give you the clean edges that you want. Uh, unless you have a really bulky and very large print, you don't actually need to put any adhesive in the center. Um, and if so, if it's really thick paper, um, especially if you think it might absorb a little bit of moisture, it's good to put that in the center because it might start to bubble a little bit. But in general, if it's single weight paper and it's smaller, just on the edges is perfectly fine. So now that I have the tape applied to it, I am going to trim it. So let's talk about exacto blade safety. Okay, so this one has a nice little cap to it. Uh, often this is the first thing that gets lost. So one thing is you can always store your X-Acto blade um, holder without the blade on it, or you can get a wine cork and stick it in there, and that way you're not gonna get stabbed by anything at any point. Um, personally, I think it's good to just take the blade out, because remember, you're not supposed to use them over and over again, so it's helpful to just replace the blade every time. So I'm gonna put that in the disposal section. And when I pick up a blade, I'm gonna pinch it on the side like this. Okay, so I'm not like holding it, the, the little um, pointy part is gonna be very sharp, okay? And that's on purpose. In fact, when I wanna see if the blade is dull, I'll put my finger in there and if it's not sharp, it probably needs to be replaced. So I am going to hold the blade like this and put it into the holder slot. The holder slot does loosen, okay? Um, and so you can, just like a screw, you can then tighten it in that grip. So now I have this nice blade. When you are cutting, you want this blade to be an extension of your hand. So if you see that the blade surface, you want the actual surface of the paper to be parallel to that. You don't want to treat it like a pencil, like this. You won't want to like go on like this, okay? You want to kind of hold it um, wherever you feel comfortable. Sometimes if somebody might hold a knife this way, like you're chopping vegetables, this is a good way. So we're gonna cut it like this. Uh, if you point it too far down, you're gonna break the tip off really quickly uh, and you'll go through more blades. This might take some practice to get used to it and that's perfectly fine. Just replace the blade. So next I'm going to put the ruler down. I'm going to align the ruler to the crop marks. And this next step is very important. Do not cut off your crop marks, okay? Don't take a big old swipe and cut the whole um, piece of paper off. You're actually gonna cut a little window out of the paper. That makes sure that you still have the crop marks. You need to cut the next line. Um, so I'm gonna overlap into the crop marks a tiny bit so that way I don't undercut. Um, what I'm gonna do is hold the blade and I am, especially if you're not confident with cutting, I am going to cut it firmly twice just to make sure that it's actually cut and you're gonna hold the ruler in place firmly with your um, non-dominant hand and then cut with your dominant hand. So when it's thin paper, it does not take much to cut. So I'm cutting on a self-healing mat right now. That means that it's meant to be cut on and so it's got all these marks on it. I'm not ruining any surface because if I did this on concrete, this blade would be ruined immediately. If I did it on a table of wood, it would be ruined and the table would be ruined. So you wanna make sure that you have that surface. If you're in a pinch and you don't have a self-cutting mat, try to find some extra cardboard or layers of paper underneath to kind of give you a buffer. Then, so you'll see I have this cut, all right? And because the tape is especially thick, it may have taken two swipes in there. So you'll see how I overlapped a little bit. And now I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and I'm gonna cut the next section and you're gonna do that until you have the whole thing cut. Just repeat, remember you're cutting a window and not cutting the whole thing off.
Okay, so this is a good example of when it's not, see, it didn't come out right away. It meant that you had to push a little bit harder of with the blade, or maybe the blade needed to be changed because it was a little bit sticky there. So now I have this nice little window, and you'll notice that I um, put the tape um, overlapping a little bit there, and I, I would like to say I did it on purpose, but I didn't. I accidentally put the tape on the wrong side, on this side. So it's an easy fix because this is the same solution as if you don't have prop marks on a poster, is now I have this edge that doesn't have adhesive. What's a girl to do? I just put on some adhesive and do your best at getting it as close to the edge as possible, okay? And then just trim it so it doesn't overlap with other tape because that will make it a little trickier for you. So it's the same thing that you would do if you don't have prop marks and no need trim. So now I just got really close to the edge there. Um, you don't want to put it on and try to pull it off. It's too tacky to do that and you'll ruin the print. So if you accidentally get it crooked or whatever, just cut it off and then add some more tape. Um, so you want to get it to be as smooth as possible. So even if there's one part that's going diagonal, fine. Just add more tape to it. No one's going to be the wiser unless you're pulling at it, ripping it, or it's really bumpy. Okay, so then the last step is actually mounting it to um, the board. So if you have a board here, you might have specifications for a project of some sort that says, hey, I want a one inch border or I want it centered in the board and the board's supposed to be this size. So you would want to accommodate for that when you measure. So in this case, I am going to accommodate for um, a one inch border. If I wanted to center it, what I would do is I would measure the dimensions of this um, image and then I would measure the dimensions of the um, board and I would take the extra part of the dimension, the width or the length, and then divide that by two. So I would know if there's six inches extra in width compared to the print for the board, divided by two, that means three inches on either side, okay? So you just wanna measure. And really, uh, you don't need to measure um, on and mark on all sides of the board. Um, you might have to do that if you're trimming it at the end but you can just mount it based on of like a little C of marks on the top and like let it lie and then cut it after. So as I mentioned, I'm going to do this with an inch border. So I am going to take my, my mat and I am actually going to measure an inch in in two spots, draw a line here and do the same thing here because I don't need to cut this board four times if I already have two perfectly nice edges. So I'm going to measure with my pencil And you know what they say, it's me measure twice, cut once. Same thing goes here. If it looks wonky to you, remeasure it, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing on the corner. And when you make pencil marks on the board, especially if it's on the white side, do them lightly so that way it's easy to erase if need be. And then I'm going to put little pencil marks here lightly. And you want to make these marks big enough that you can actually tell if something's crooked um, because if they're just little tiny marks, then you won't be able to tell. So now I have this nice little um, corner, this L as it may be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to then mount this piece of paper based on that corner and I'm going to know it's straight. So if I accidentally go like this and it's crooked, then I might have to trim everything down after the fact so it's gonna be less than an inch border, but at least it will be straight um, there. So what's helpful, especially if you have a very large print, okay, this one just happens to be small, is if you have the top edge, it can be the bottom edge, just any edge in general that has one solid piece, is that you only reveal one side first, okay? So that means that you're going to peel off the liner of the tape and you shouldn't need fancy nails for this okay again throw it in the trash or put it in a little trash pile and deal with it later so now you have one edge that is exposed that means that i can touch all these other edges and they won't accidentally get tacked down onto the board and then i have to pull it up if something rips so i'm going to align 
this one edge to the top. And so that way I can make sure that it's not crooked. So once I have that aligned, I can press it down smoothly with my fingers. So then if you see this, you'll notice that only the top edge is aligned. So guess what? Now it's in perfect position. So all you have to do is gently take off the rest of the liner on all edges. And then slowly let it just lie down onto the board and then press gently with your hands. And now you have a perfectly mounted with no bubbles print here because you did it that way. And it's less intimidating when you just expose one edge at a time. So don't forget to do that. So the last step is just to cut the other part. So I am going to measure from one inch um, to the other edges. If I had accidentally done this crooked and it went a little wonky, so it would be less than an inch on this corner, I would just measure maybe it's a half an inch and then draw a line half an inch around the whole thing and trim it that way. So at least it's straight. And even though it doesn't have a one inch border, it still looks nice and clean. And that is what's most important here. So I'm gonna uh, measure quickly the other border here. And I don't actually need to, don't actually need to uh, draw a line for this one because these can actually be my cut lines. But if lines make you feel good, then draw a line that makes you feel comfortable. Okay. Uh, so now I am going to lay my ruler down and put it against the marks. So I have my knife here and I'm going to change the blade because I already cut something once and this mat board is much thicker than that paper. So I wanna make sure that I have a nice um, new blade. What happens if you don't have a nice new blade or you have kind of hesitation marks as it may be when you're not so comfortable cutting the mat board, is you'll get this little shavings or slivers on the side of it, which it looks like some kind of like mixed at it with sandpaper of some sort. Um, and then it won't be very clean. So you have to get a nice clean blade, have confident strokes. So what I would do is I uh, match up your ruler and then you're going to, again, keep the blade parallel for the surface and you're going to cut as many times until you feel that piece give way. So don't, don't pick up the ruler and think it gave way and it didn't. Okay. That way you can avoid having to recut and get those weird marks. So I'm going to have nice bolt and um, pressure on the side. Make sure that your thumb is not on the path of this blade coming down the ruler. Okay, so I had nice two confident cuts there and it, this one gave through because it was a nice, uh, nice blade. And then we just have one more cut. Okay, and now what I can do is just take the little eraser and I can erase off the, uh, the little marks in there and you got your mounted poster.